Good morning, everybody. I am Dr. L.R. Manjunath, honorary chairman of Indian Concrete Institute, Bangalore Center. Welcome all the delegates and institution, Dr. T. Simaya Institute of Technology, and today's speaker, Dr. Chandra Mauli SP, a professor from uh, our uh, well known institute. Uh, uh, this is uh, PS University, Bangalore. So, uh, friends, uh, I say Bangalore Center is uh, conducting many webinars on different topics of construction and mainly into concrete. Today, it's a very good opportunity. A student doctor of T. Timaya College of Engineering, uh, myself and my uh, secretary, we went and inaugurated very recently. Maybe the last one we inaugurated. So, this institution we went and saw, saw it, it, uh, very adjacent to our uh, historical Kolar gold field uh, and uh, yes, adjacent to that, very greenery and uh, it is in the art of uh, a very good uh, ecosystem, uh, very good institution, well maintained institution. So they are having student chapter, I say student chapter, along with the student chapter, Indian Congress Institute Bangalore Center is organizing many webinars on different topics, inviting experts. Uh, from the field of civil engineering, construction, concrete, and other things. Today, we are having eminent speaker, Dr. Chandra Mauli, professor, Department of Civil Engineering, PS College of Engineering. He is going to talk about structural health monitoring in cons construction like industry. All the speakers talk about uh, mainly about uh, technical things. He's also talking about business. Became an entrepreneur, the structure and the monitoring. Uh, they can use the, uh, make use of this opportunity, learn many good tips from uh, Dr. Chandra Modi uh, sir to implement uh, practically in the field. Uh, today, uh, uh, from the institute, uh, Dr. T. Timaya, Institute of Technology, uh, uh, principal is there, then uh, faculty is there, Professor uh, Manila Madam, Manjunath sir is there, principal sir is there, and uh, so all are there. To welcome all of you uh, for the program, over to the institution, uh, Manila Madam. Thank you. Good morning. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome one and all to the webinar, Structural Health Monitoring in Construction Industry, Introduction and Business Opportunity, organized by ICI, in association with Dr. T. Timaya Institute of Technology, KGF. We are highly privileged to be the part of this program. I welcome Chairman Dr. L. R. Manjunatha and Dr. R. L. Ramesh, Secretary of ICI to this webinar. I also welcome our speaker, Dr. Chandra Mauli SV, Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, PES University, Bangalore. I welcome all the members of ICI chapter to this webinar. And also, I extend my hearty welcome to the management, principal, faculty members, and students of Dr. TTIT. Last but not the least, I welcome all the participants to the webinar. I wish you will have a great experience in today's webinar. Welcome you all. Thank you. Now I request our principal to speak about our today's session. Good morning to everyone. I'm extremely happy to be part of this uh, expert lecture uh, in association with Indian Concrete Institute hosted by our institution. First of all, I must be thankful and grateful to the chairman of ICA I Bangalore, Dr. L. R. Manjunatha and Dr. R. L. Ramesha, Ramesh. Secretary ICA I Bangalore for having agreed to 
be part of this expect lecture and also i must be grateful to dr chandramauli sv who is professor department of civil engineering ps university bangalore for having accepted our invitation for an expect lecture on structural health monitoring in the construction industry introduction as business opportunity in fact we wanted to have a small display of our college video but we unfortunately we couldn't able to do this because of some technical problems in the audio however i would like to say a few words about our institution it started in the year 1986 by late president emeritus dr t timaya who is an is retired he is a freedom fighter a great sports person administrator who is solely responsible for establishing various institutions in kgf under the aegis of golden valley education trust now today apart from engineering colleges engineering college we have first gate college law college at kgf pu college nearly 5000 students are studying in all these institution with more than 500 faculty members and uh, non teaching staffs are working and now at present the president of dr t timans of technology is his son dr t venkatwardhan who is a technocraft and a great corporate and uh, managing dna network which is number one in india as far as event management is concerned and he organizes big sports events conducted in india like ipl isl football tournaments kabaddi tournaments and all other you know corporate events etc so he is giving lot of impetus to our institutions and our institution is shortly going for nac and nbi accreditation and we have got very good placements and uh, as far as results are concerned our institution is getting uh, every year 5 to 10 ranks and in academic performance we are placed uh, uh, among the colleges in which you in 10th position this is how we are doing it out so this is about our institution and uh, without taking much of your time uh, let me speak a few word about this expert lecture on this topic though in detail uh, dr chandramauli will take but to start with uh, let me tell a few words about this very important topic today the development of country is decided on the basis of its infrastructures no doubt for a major part of country's revenue is invested in this sector as our lives lie on them for the proper management of infrastructures their condition and serviceability should be regularly monitored structural health monitoring is a technique used to determine strain stress displacement etc at critical members and some of the dynamic parameters like natural frequency dampening in model shapes with the time variations it detects the damage and thereby uh, helps in to increase the performance or life of a structure the objective of this webinar is to give a review of structural health monitoring in different countries all over the world and the reason this technique shall be used in our country with this a simple introduction i request uh, dr chandramauli sv to proceed and give an expect lecture on the today's topic yeah and before that i request 
our professor mr manjunath to introduce the speaker to the participants thank you have a nice day have a wonderful day thank you thank you one and all Welcome to all. I uh, welcome to the webinar conducted by Indian Concrete Institute in association with uh, Dr. T. T. Mai Institute of Technology, KGF. Today the session is about uh, structural monitoring in construction industry, introduction and uh, business opportunity by Sir Dr. Chandra Mouli S. V. Professor of Department of Civil Engineering, P. S. University, Bangalore. Sir is accomplished professional engineer with more than 80, 18 years. Of uh, industrial experience and key member in national and international projects of esteemed organization, sir has provided technical supports and ex expertise to projects in uh, Australia, Finland, v Vietnam, Russia, Turkey, China, Japan, and Brazil. Responsible for proposal activities, preparing estimation, designing, developing technology, and set implementation in project related to structure. In his provide capacity, sir is published and presented more than 25 years in international and national conference and also trained 40 plus interns and guided 20 plus postgraduate MTech and ME thesis on non-SHM, structural dynamics, earthquake engineering, FEA and remedial engineering and structural engineering. His current research interests include SHM, Structural dynamics, earthquake engineering, seismic retrofits, uh, advanced composite structural retrofits, and rehabilitation, and remedial engineering. Presently, an active member of ACCE, ISWE, ISCT, IECI, etc. P of his remedial engineering projects are uh, seismic retrofitting of Ujjala Palace, uh, PWD Agartala Tripura, rehabilitation of Tertiary treatment plant, hospice structure, MCC building, and the seed filtration plants, etc. Structural analysis and retrofittings of flat slab using external forced tensioning system and uh, CFRP composites of IBM building at Chennai. Structural analysis and retrofitting of flat slab using advanced composite and the steel grill system, Sony Ericsson buildings at Chennai. Sir, Dr. Chandramouli. SV has been honored as best professor in civil engineering studies at the 27th Diwang Mahata Business School Award 2019. We are always short of time to brief, sir, accomplishment and achievements. It gives us to great privilege to be a part of your webinar, sir. Thank you for our accepting our invitation. We look forward for many more like this. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Andramali, sir. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning, all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, one and all. Uh, good morning to one and all. Uh, it's been an honor. I'm being honored, uh, and uh, it's a privilege to be a part of this uh, particular uh, webinar session. And uh, uh, I must be thanking uh, the hosting and the organizing uh, institute, Dr. T. Timaya Institute of Technology and ICI. So it's a privilege to be again, you know, presenting for on behalf of ICI. It's a great privilege to be a part in the uh, uh, in a team of ICI, wherein they have been doing a good job of uh, uh, developing the nation by, uh, you know, circulating or uh, trying to do such webinars, wherein the knowledge of the individual develops, and the knowledge and the skills are quite two different aspects which we are going to talk about, and I would. Uh, uh, maybe when I start with this presentation and conclude, I would definitely tell how the knowledge is quite important and how is it quite different from the skill set. And firstly, the present day topic is uh, structural health monitoring in construction industry. 
and uh, it's going to be an introduction and business opportunity. So uh, before I start, I would like to uh, remember to all the teachers, uh, being uh, told uh, that uh, most of my teachers uh, are already in the webinar, and as well as these, uh, my uh, senior faculty members who are also my colleagues who are joined in here, I have my, my, I pay my respects, and I always begin my uh, uh, presentation, all my presentation, uh, remembering all the teachers who taught me from the day one of my life. So, the firstly, you know, I always believe when uh, the student is ready, the guru will appear, so things will happen when it has to happen. So, with all the respects to the gurus, I start my webinar and always wish as a teacher, every individual student is a teacher by himself, every teacher himself is a student. So, thereby we should always remember that, you know, every one individual should remember his teacher. Uh, the best way uh, to know the importance of a teacher is to go through the Guru Ashtakam written by Sri Adi Chakracharya, who himself, Sri Adi Chakracharya himself is the greatest renowned uh, teacher who has uh, done uh, so many, many, many uh, achievements in his life in a short time. But still, he says, if you don't remember your teacher, uh, there is no point of uh, learning things. So, uh, very, very well said in the Guru Ashtakam. If somebody is interested, kindly go through it. At every of my presentation in the seminars, and I presented, and uh, I always uh, start my, I remember my teachers, and then I start my presentation. So, today's topic, uh, we'll be directly getting into it. Uh, that is structural health monitoring in construction industry. Now, in order to understand this webinar, uh, the presentations of the webinar to cater to all the required uh, participants, to the distinguished participants uh, who are present here, a, good, a very warm welcome to you all. And I believe that in this participants, you know, there are students and uh, the students could be bachelor degrees and the master degrees of civil engineering. There could be academicians or teachers or researchers and those uh, related to this uh, science. Okay, so there, as well as I do understand that there will be some participants who are innovators, manufacturers, developers who are related to this particular subject would be interesting in, uh, would be interested in this particular presentation on structural health monitoring or health monitoring or measurement or IoT. Name it anything. It has got different names, but it does the same job. So I believe that the audience also includes those. And I also uh, believe that the audience also has got the entrepreneurs and the investors who are looking for such opportunities to make their investments and develop the business. As you know, this is a golden opportunity because we are in the close down and you know there is going to be a market uh, uh, down and there's going to be a huge potential immediately after the market opens up. So uh, there could be already participants uh, who could be a partitioner uh, who are practicing SHM and they are also a consultant or maybe they could, have, they could uh, review what is happening or could be knowing you know what uh, students are learning what the academician are interested so there could be a few of the participants and there could be engineers related to this particular subject or uh, anything related to it so this particular presentation which i have uh, titled as uh, structural health monitoring in construction industry uh, that is uh, uh, introduction and going to be on uh, how to improve business. What I've done is, uh, considering these uh, mixture of uh, audience, I've tried to make my presentation and whoever it is, they're going to get their uh, uh, benefit out of this presentation. It's all the perspectives. So uh, why do I bring this particular thing is because when we are dealing with webinars, uh, there could be some type of webinars are to enrich the knowledge of the students because this has been hosted by ICA student chapter as well as in coordination with an institute, academic institute, and there could be other participants which is open to all. So thereby, you know, there most of the uh, participants who come to who attend this webinar would expect something to take away. The takeaway for them would be, uh, if in case you are a business guy and you are into business, active business, I think the presentation can be viewed from that perspective and get your uh, takeaways. And if you are a student, definitely you're going to get most of it. And as I say, and if in case you have learned more on SHM, and thereby you can also introspect on your learning as well as you know you can develop in the fall of the day. So I have put a, a slide here. If you can see my screen, you can see that uh, I put uh, the perspective perspective, your most valuable resource, your perspective matters in every uh, thing. So though there, there is a close down, uh, we, there are most of the webinars, you know, your perspectives can change how the market is going to open. So thereby, you know, your perspective is important to all the participants. If in case uh, you feel that you are seeing the same uh, introduction, or you can look into the, your perspectives and you can definitely make uh, the benefit out of this presentation. So the outline of this presentation is going to be introduction. Uh, as I said, there will be few people who would not even know what is an SHM or could be 
you knowing a little uh, very little about shm and there could be uh, someone who may want to know that why there is need of shm and the definition of shm and the component of shm's application how it is applied in civil engineering where it is applied and i would definitely go and get into business opportunity and the structural health monitoring because i was into that domain uh, working for uh, various organizations and uh, thereby you know i can tell you what is going to have or, or what is the business and how, how much of market is open for you and what are the strengths of the market what are the market parameters i'll talk about that also there will be a takeaway for that and there will be some concluding remark which will be more uh, uh, talking about the, the whole conclusion of this webinar and uh, the, uh, the whole aspect of conducting such webinars and few references if someone is interested then we'll take some uh, questions if there is any questions i will definitely answer after this presentation and thereby you know all your doubts will be clear and i'll be always available on email and at uh, the institute you're always welcome to my uh, department of civil engineering and we will be able to address all those issues so let's start with the first as we all know we are all so proud we were doing the COVID close down. Uh, the construction industry is the only industry which had the antivirus. That is the home, right? So everybody was proud about it. Uh, it's, uh, a few months back, there was a major earthquake, and everybody happened to have a uh, disheartened because the construction industry was a major one which was hit, and as well as you know, there were major uh, deaths because of the construction industry. But the same world which used to talk uh, the, about the construction industry in a different way now it's uh, it is uh, feeling proud because we are making homes for real. so many people. Uh, you even who have put into quarantine, they need a uh, house and construction industry is one of the largest industry in the world. That's neat. Uh, every presentation will start with this because that's a huge market and that's a backbone for economic development for any country, including India. So now, if you look at the construction industry, what we call a civil infrastructure, what is civil infrastructure? We, if you join as a civil engineer, your first question is, uh, do you only construct buildings and uh, bridges? That's the, that's a very bad idea that you have about civil industry. Look at uh, everything around you, you will have something like civil industry, okay? So that civil in infrastructure includes all those key things that is uh, that is surrounding you. In fact, uh, it is called as a living companion. In fact, uh, I'll have a webinar on that uh, civil industry as civil living, uh, living companion and maybe in the later days you will get that with that but in this particular aspect the civil infrastructure is presently where do we stay is that we have new infrastructure and aging infrastructure so then even if in case let's say the all the if even if you are constructing only the new infrastructures those infrastructures also ages over a period of time so civil infrastructures which includes encompasses everything around you which is a living companion for any human being so we'll include that both of the new infrastructure as well as the aging infrastructure mm -hmm. now uh, civil infrastructure incorporates uh, the modern complex design uh, as you know, nowadays we are in the most competitive world and we are looking for most architectural requirement and you know the, there are more complex designs. There are going to be large spans. We are spanning about kilometers. We are not talking about meters. We are going with kilometers. We, we are reaching the skies. We are touching the clouds. Uh, and the complex geometry, we can't, you know, the architects are so competitive. They give us so, such a complex uh, geometries and it's going to be tough for any structural engineer or those related to these uh, engineering aspects. And the conditions, what the conditions we are presently the temperatures and the the boundary conditions or you can, you can say all the conditions that is ambient conditions are uh, making it more complex the designs becomes more complex in order to balance this there is a complex system uh, that you know with such as control devices the composites so these are the things that are already incorporated that is being ex implemented by the retrofitting industry as you know now as well as if you look at the material uh, industry, the material itself is being quite advanced. You now we are reaching strengths of 100 MPA. So uh, previously, you know, it was quite a difficult task. Now you know that you have a permeable concrete, then you have the uh, the flexible concrete. There are so many uh, types of concrete, and uh, we are also getting into nanotechnology. So there is advanced material uh, quality which uh, are performing better. They are durable also, and with this, they are, we have so I mean, we have been supported with sophisticated analysis and design uh, software. Like, you know, if you look at the previous days, you know, people used to take about maybe a month or so to design a structure. Now you can design a structure in a few hours if you are an expertise. I think in four hours, you can give your your uh, client the drawings with all the uh, means, a few corrections to be included. You know, human intervention is required, but most of the things are being uh, done by the sophisticated analysis and the software. Okay. So now, uh, as you, as I said, that because of these uh, uh, possibilities that we have in the civil industry and the pro pro progress we have in the Civil industry, we are able to reach the targets of heights. You know the heights. We are all there's a competition in heights. There's a competition in lengths. Okay. Now, 
Now, irrespective of this, whether you have the most advanced structure or you have the uh, uh, most uh, traditional structure, irrespective of it, every structure has its life. Okay. Now, when we design a structure, now we are we are we understand that these structures are designed to uh, to certain capacity, and we also know beforehand that if in case this is designed in uh, you know uh, you know different way or if in case we know the capacity beyond which it will not be able to take the loads or um, or the, uh, the the parameters so thereby there is always when you design a structure it is going to be a, initially it is going to have a capacity but over a period of time as you know it is going to deteriorate now this deterioration could uh, it is a time varying and it is going to decrease by its capacity now if in case you have this, uh, it has been, uh, you know, uh, the, if there is a harsh condition, like, you know, these are the various uh, you know, conditions that you have these days. You have the corrosion, you have the higher traffic, and then the uh, tsunami, and then the brown glass. These things aggravate the deterioration process. Now, as you know, every, kept, every structure is going to deteriorate over a period of time, and it can deteriorate based on the, uh, the possibilities of the way it is being uh, loaded. Now, this loading is always varying. Now, if in case you look at the one of, if you look in the previous month, the all your bridges were loaded. You know, we were talking about the, when the bridge is going to fail. Now, none of the bridges, you know, during the COVID period, you saw all the bridges were kept vacant. So, most of you know that there is a variation, there is a seasonal variation, there is a daily variation. The loads depends on, it is depending on the requirement uh, of the public. Now, the loads which are varying, whenever there is a variability and whenever there is uh, such type of variability parameter coming into picture, we need we always represent by the probability curves. So these probability curves, the, the load versus capacity. When you see over a period of time when the structure is going to uh, uh, deteriorate or with, the, uh, when, with time the structure is going to deteriorate and it is going to reduce the uh, capacity of the structure but the loading will never change or it will be varying uh, as I said as I said but it will never reduce so much that you know it will be uh, uh, in the case the structure will be capable but it will be having the reduced capacity thereby the probability of uh, failure is going to increase so there so as you see now the the structures are being subjected to harsh conditions and this is going to deteriorate the loading is going to vary over a period of time the capacity of the structure and the probability of failure is going to reduce so let's understand the life cycle of a structure any structure when it is going to be designed initially it is going to be at to the fullest capacity as i as i said in the previous slide and thereby it is going to reduce over a period of time and it is going to be accumulated the damage is going to be accumulated but we all know that every of the structure needs to be uh, uh, you know uh, subjected to some some type of performance assessment you know the limits if in case you see some type of damping maybe you may remember, you may think that the structure is going to uh, have some type of uh, problems and thereby you call the inspectors or you call the retrofitting agency and then you ask them to make a performance assessment thereby certain conditions sometimes the deterioration will be so severe that you know that that could have reached the limits uh, okay of its minimum performance so thereby once uh, you uh, you try to do a performance assessment you would be uh, uh, expected to do a rehab or you need to retrofit or repair the system now once you repair the system again you know it will be uh, you are thereby increasing this performance but because of the time again the because of the uh, uh, duration it is going to deteriorate and as you know, the design of structures, once in its lifetime, it is going to be subjected to one of the severe events, or that event could again bring down the capacity of the structure, thereby performance can be hampered. Immediately when there is a structure that is being subjected to some type of earthquake, now what happens is that, again, you get into uh, retrofitting schemes, and then you try to uh, enhance the capacity, and thereby, you know, you try to enhance its uh, performance, and you, that again, the cycle again changes. Now, if you look at this particular graph, now what we have to understand from that graph is that you know that the the structure has got a lifespan okay then you know there is service life because of this deterioration and after the limits wherever you are allowing you for the performance assessment not necessary it has to reach that uh, that limiting uh, level but it could be any any time and thereby you enhance it or you try to do a performance uh, uh, i mean you enhance the performance of the structure and then they could be subject to some all these service lives which are on the x parameters you never know what is you cannot quantify that that means you cannot quantify x parameter you can't quantify the y parameter 
parameter because we cannot as assess this particular y parameter so therefore and as well as the rate of deterioration is unknown completely unknown now if you have some type of uh, scheme wherein i know all the parameters like if i know the rate of deterioration if i know the x parameter and the y parameter i can easily find what would be the lifespan so this is what is required so what is required is basically we need to assess the performance now if in case you are all civil infrastructure or aging systems, as we know, there is an increasing demand and it has been subjected to aggressive environment and there are so many other uh, uh, supporting parameters and thereby there is going to be a damage or deterioration. These two words are always uh, is quite complex for students to understand. Damage is nothing but a change in a state. It could be a positive state or a negative state. So uh, kindly understand that damage to be a change of state rather than you know damage to be only a crack. So that uh, when it comes to these monitoring schemes, a damage should be understood as a change change of state. The state could be on the positive side. Let's say you have a, a, a concrete that has been deteriorated. The state A and state B, uh, that difference is going to give you a damage. If in case you have a concrete that has been retrofitted, you have, if you see the change of state, that could be also a deterioration. So the, da the damage is definition has to be rightly understood. Now, once uh, the because of these parameters, you have aging system, increasing demand, aggressive environment, other factors, reach damage, deterioration. And with that, if in case you don't have a proper assessment of that structure at the right time, and we call it as inadequate performance assessment, and thereby it uh, leads to a decrease in capacity or increase in the risk of failure. And when, as you know, when there is a decrease in capacity or the increasing risk of failure, the structure is going to definitely fail. So that's the uh, whole uh, whole concept of uh, what happens with the structure. If you see the recent uh, the newspaper article or if you looked into WhatsApp, you have been getting this uh, one of the disasters that happened in Vizak and that was quite disturbing. It actually it was uh, it was an avoidable tragedy actually. So if you read this particular article, I will not get into the details of the article. If you can, uh, so if someone is interested, the whole idea is to teach you or tell you about what is structural health monitoring to people to introduce them who are completely not aware or to those people who are aware can look into the business as I said, change your perspective, you'll get to know, uh, you'll get your what you want to take away. Okay, now if you look at this particular article, it says that why is that gas leak an avoidable tragedy? Uh, if you look at that, they, one of the uh, statement in that particular uh, article says that the plant was not operating due to lockdown for almost for 40 days now the stru the structure which was uh, there was not operating why it has to be operating so what is the need if in case if it was operating will it be safe enough so that could be the question but they say that if it was operational there could have been the operation can include so many uh, uh, understanding it could be that functioning of the persons the the employees who can go take a look at the uh, uh, all the gauges the pressure gauges the temperature gauges and all those things if in case the structure was performing the operating and as well as the whole team of engineers as well as the supporting staff were operating thereby uh, they say that this uh, disaster could be uh, averted so now, if you look at this particular thing, that means this particular structure, which was not assessed, or the performance of this particular structure was not assessed because of the close down, and thereby we needed to do a lot of other complications, and thereby uh, lead to this particular disaster. Just look into it; you will understand the importance of uh, uh, operating or trying to know or assess the performance continuously. Now. Uh, for those students, if in case you are uh, you are not used to structures or uh, those people who are uh, not from structural department, a uh, few of them are from ISO or from electronics. Now you just look into if you are uh, if you are in the schools and uh, when you had the school to be locked down, I would suggest you kindly look at your uh, soles of your shoes. For sure, it is going to. Own, or it is going to get thrown out. If you want to understand more about it, there's a lot of research that is done on material science. You just look into this, why do so, uh, the shoe soles disintegrate, what happens with soul, soles as it ages. So this is a uh, this is a particular uh, blog which I read. And uh, I, in fact, I myself had uh, um, uh, seen this particular thing happening to me uh, in the right event. Uh, so what happens is that when you store this particular shoe, if you're not using it, uh, because of its material property, it is going to deteriorate. Now, the parameters what we were uh, using all this while is like harsh environment and those uh, the other parameters which I told you. As well, if it is not operational, that could also lead to the failures. Now, 
there are certain cases where it is operational and again it fails and I, these are the few failures just to just to uh, help you, you know understand the failures and get the uh, intensity of what we're talking about you need to understand whenever you look into failures and whenever you face the failures rather than looking at the pictures it may give you a different impression it may look very light but if in case you're at the site definitely it's going to change your engineering principles as well as your engineering understanding so if you look at this this is a recent failure that happened in mumbai so you all know that it was in the newspaper if somebody is in mumbai you would really understand the quantum of this and there are a few old buildings that uh, uh, came down and you know how many people lost their life the people could not uh, there could uh, nobody could reach that the ambulance couldn't reach there in time and that complete building came into uh, into rubble so these are the failures we should know uh, because we are not assessing its performance we are not knowing what is happening with their uh, conditions and thereby this would take away lots and lots of life and that's our uh, uh, responsibility to look for some uh, uh, some uh, ideas or some innovative uh, uh, solutions to give a solution to such type of problems and not just uh, the old buildings it's you can in the bangalore city if most of you are from bangalore uh, the bangalore city itself the ica was uh, involved in this investigation as i as I remember I, because I spoke to a few people, ACC and ICA uh, members were in, involved in assessing the condition of this particular structure and doing a report on it. I believe they are more aware of this and there will be some webinars that will talk on this. So you can see that most of the new buildings failed because of various reasons. So we, can, we can talk about the reasons, but you know this, are, this could have been avoided. Uh, this could be ethical issues or unethical issues. Though the most of the uh, structures, uh, not just in India, it's everywhere else. There are so much of tall buildings collapse and you can read all these things that it is given in wikipedia you can just go through it and always a failure is a first step you know you should understand as an engineer if you learn failures i think thereby you understand you know how to uh, i mean how to conduct in you know, engineering if you want to develop your engineering skill you'll understand how to develop your engineering skill because of, based on the failures only we are able to put our assumptions and thereby put our theory and as well as when you are a businessman if you look at the failures you'll definitely know where you have the prospects to improve your business so if you look at the, the building not just the building and that's when the bridges also have collapsed in the various countries because of various reasons and uh, if you just look into this uh, with, uh, wikipedia i think you will get the most of the details i just wanted to highlight and then uh, get into the uh, main topic and uh, as well as introduce as well as get into the business opportunities now whenever you see such type of failures and uh, it's been a common tendency to common public i'm not talking about only of engineers it's of common public you can see the, uh, the all the news channels will get activated and then the all the, uh, the you know all the people start blaming and they try to find out uh, these are the things that is common that is that's just by generation it's happening over a period of time but what is needed is as an engineer as a learned persons as a persons of uh, national interest what they would do is they would like to improve their performance assessment now improve the surveillance inspection and testing methods maintenance to enhance the technical base for uh, assuring continued performance safety and economy and uh, efficient damage detection strategy now as i said uh, damage can be a change of state it could be any state okay so so there is a need there is a need for doing this not just find faults every time we, but as engineers we would require more of data to give a complete assessment so that we develop our models develop our theory develop our solutions now in that way the structural health monitoring which is generally known to most of them in the civil infrastructure as well as in various other industry it has already been used mechanical industry and aerospace are the first ones to use this but in structural health monitoring in civil industry is new but it's not uh, it's already almost a century old i can say of um, but it's been implemented over the period of uh, being um, maybe in the last few decades so the structural health monitoring uh, of uh, civil infrastructure is presently being accepted by the majority in civil engineering fraternity as a potential method of assessing the condition of the structure. So this has been already accepted. Now, if in case uh, you are uh, into a BE student and uh, we just heard the uh, word for the first time, it is very similar to human health monitoring. And what you do here is uh, for the human health monitoring, you put all the uh, all the system on your uh, the person who is already in trouble or who is in being 
diseased or is uh, is not healthy. So what you do is you try to monitor what is happening with his organs or we or monitor what is happening with his condition, and thereby the expert tries to give an opinion on that and try, tries to give a solution mm -hmm. on that. Similarly, uh, structural health monitoring expert, what he does is he tries to uh, put some sensors or the uh, some type of uh, instruments. I'll use some basic words so that it is reachable to everyone. Uh, to those expert uh, experts on this week, kindly excuse me for this. Um, so you try to put these equipments and tools and you call it uh, instruments. Or, uh, basically, these are sensors, these sensors, and then you have the system, the complete system connected, and thereby an expert reads. So the process, uh, SHM process, uh, is nothing but the acquiring these data from the sensors, analyzing this uh, using uh, various kinds of systems on various kinds of technology. Okay, the basic idea is to understand the health of the system. Now, particular word structural health monitoring uh, is presently being uh, to the activities of SHM. Uh, the presently the structural health monitoring is basically called as a structural monitoring only. Uh, the reason is very simple. St structure is well defined. The struct the definition of structure is well defined, but the health has its own uh, connotation. So, like you know, the health. Uh, uh, is again, you know, has its own meaning, and uh, thereby uh, the most of the experts have the opinion. It is already there in the circular now, uh, in the uh, structural health monitoring industry, that uh, the uh, it's better to use uh, structural monitoring in general rather than structural health monitoring. So if I uh, mention structural health monitoring or structural monitoring, it means the same. And since I have uh, working on structural engineering background, so I will be looking into the structural aspect of it. It could be somebody who's measuring only measuring what is happening with the structure. So thereby it's structural monitoring. Uh, tech, uh, so uh, you need to define what is structural monitoring. A technology driven automated solution. Basically, there is a minimum human intervention whereby sensing devices such as sensors or any other instruments are installed and remain in place. Sometimes it could be remaining in place. Sometimes it is on temporary basis also. So on or in a structure with the intention of capturing structural data. Structural data are those data that you uh, it is the engineers, he, 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 the, whenever you take the data, it is in context. So if in case you want a strain parameter, you will go with this uh, structural data. On continuous basis, uh, you can acquire this census data continuously over a period of time. In this period can be uh, as large as a decade, it can go to two decades, it can go even to centuries based on the system what you have provided for the purpose of objectively and accurately assessing structural performance. So there is an objective whenever you go with structural monitoring. So that's a very wild, uh, I mean, that's going to be a very wide definition. But if you read into your context, as I said, your perspectives, you will understand that it can come this particular definition, um, it's the present day definition for all structural monitoring experts. So thereby, this is the definition of it. So now, if in case you are, uh, if in case you are an expert in this field or you are trying to get into this field with an assumption that you know, if I have a structural monitoring expert, or if you become a structural expert, or uh, if in case I get into the census business, I think uh, the other things would be easily done. It is not so. If in case you are into structural health monitoring, it does not rule out the other things like the routine inspections. Okay, if in case um, you want to get into this business or you want to learn this uh, particular uh, structural health monitoring or structural monitoring, you need to know the basics of civil engineering. You need to the basic of structural engineering and as well as have some practice and as well as the retrofitting schemes, what we all follow, that is routine visual inspections, uh, then the non-destructive and the evaluation techniques, the short term monitoring. And uh, there are various uh, related terminologies used these days and it has been used by various industries like the non-destructive evaluation also means uh, something closer to structural health monitoring. Structural monitoring or measurement also sometimes you just monitor like you have your pressure gauges, you know, even in your homes, you have the pressure gauges, you have some meter, meters uh, that gives you some reading. And these are nothing but these are monitoring and measurements. So structural health monitoring, uh, it could be on some type of uh, assessment of what is happening with the structure, condition monitoring, which is generally spoken in uh, uh, aeronautics and mechanical industry, and damage prognosis, which talks about how the life is going to be extended and how what is happening with the structure and what is happening with the material property. These are the things that uh, the structural health monitoring, which are uh, when we talk about when anyone else is talking about these things, it also means the same. So basically, there are various related terminologies that uh, we should not uh, mix up things, but it should be very clear that all these things means the same. Now, 
irrespective of what uh, terminologies we use, the mission of any monitoring scheme is to uh, provide as much as in information as possible in the simplest and most complete for to be used by those who make the decisions. Now, if you look at the dynamics of this particular uh, business, uh, if you uh, structural health monitoring, now you would be working for your a company wherein the company uh, would have different expertise and you would be one of the structural health monitoring expertise, but the other expertise may not be into structural monitoring, but they will be into building sectors or designing of building. Some people will be in the proof checking. Some people would be a boss. Some people would be, you know, just wanted to know what what's happening with the business, looking at the financial things, and some people would be looking at the operation of the uh, company. But all these people would be definitely interested in what you're doing. So similarly, when it comes to the normal users, like the users or the customers, what we call, or the road users, or the bridge users, or the building users, or the occupants, or the business offices, you have your uh, other people who are your clients, they would like to get the information, but how would they get the information? They want it as simple as possible because they don't want to get into engineering aspects. They just want to say that whether the structure is safe, whether the strains are within the limits. These are the questions, and it has to be complete. You just, as an engineer, even if it is simple, the information is has to be complete and uh, to, that has to be used not just collect the information as we collect all the files and just put it on their tables it doesn't happen that way all the information should be relevant you can't just uh, use the you just uh, dump all the informations and then be it unused it has to be used and it has to be used effectively by those people that has to make the decision so that's the mission of uh, structural health monitoring but if you look into this particular uh, if you are an expert uh, as you know as you go uh, it, uh, you improve your knowledge you would look between the words okay now there is a this particular statement says provide as much as information as possible in the simplest and most complete uh, from to be used by those to make the decisions now I would look into this particular slide which is a quite uh, it gives me a complete idea of what I'm talking about if you look at this particular uh, slide you can see that you have a particular uh, a person or a system you can call it as a system a body a uh, person who is alive and then you have your uh, instruments or the sensors that is up uh, that is there and you have to know its condition okay now you have the systems that is connected and there you have some type of an expert it could be a major expert it could be just a uh, um, beginner or then you also see your customers here so if you are a student think it this way that you have the sensors you have the instruments connected to a box and you have uh, an expert and then you have somebody who is interested to know what is the condition of it so now what if in case the sensors look at this particular slide you can see that she is uh, trying to bang because it's not functioning to understand it's not functioning my question to you is there could be a fault in these sensors there could be a fault in this particular system but the system is performing well but there could be a fault in the person's understanding okay now what happens with your clients they're not able to understand so what you require is that we need to have the reliable information from there from these sensors, from these instruments, and thereby from the expert also. So you need to have a reliable information from the reliable source, and that could be system, data, or expertise. And you need to be having a reliable system and the expertise. So very, very important when it comes to structural health monitoring, understanding the business of structural health monitoring, because I've been into this industry, I've seen uh, such type of scenarios wherein uh, we, where, uh, in the business, as you see, uh, the language matters a lot, but technicals on the whole, that the last day, uh, the technicalities uh, is the one that that is going to keep up your business alive. So, so the, we have to uh, put the statement, the mission statement has to be reframed, like provide as much as reliable information as possible. And it has to be in the simplest and most complete form to be used, okay? So now we have understood that what is structural health monitoring, what is a definition of uh, structural health monitoring, why we need structural health monitoring, you know, because we know the failures earlier, and then now we are going to implement the structural health monitoring. Now, if you want to get into it, just uh, to understand what are the components of structural health monitoring. Now, basically you have seven components, and that is a structure, sense, uh, acquisition data acquisition systems data transfer data management and data analysis and then comes your algorithms and then what you do with those data okay so now these are the seven components that you would be dealing with when it comes to structural health monitoring now it looks as simple as that but when you get into the business aspect of it 
when you are looking into the technical aspect of it, you may have to understand that this monitoring scheme or the monitoring technology is a multidisciplinary system or it is it has to be worked in network, in network with lots and lots of domain expertise. So if you want to come up with some type of a system, if you're an innovator, and if you're working with IOTs and then you know you want to come up with a solution that is more reliable. Uh, as I said, reliable is a very uh, word, uh, word for the ac academic point of view, from the student point of view, yes, you can develop some system that could be uh, giving you reliable uh, solutions to your uh, theses or your for your testing. But when it comes to the real aspect, you, are, you need to consider a lot of things and then you, know, you need to work out with these people. And this is a multidisciplinary activities. If you can look at this particular slide, you see the components are data acquisition, data transmission, data storage, data processing, data interpretation, and the power supply. And there are other related uh, uh, you know, engineering domains that get into, nowadays, you know, the big data is coming into play, and, you know, the data processing and data storage, all this thing get into that particular aspect. Now, you need to have the art ways, and the, for this art ways, you need to at least know the basics of these uh, things. That is, if you, for a civil engineering, you know, it's an infrastructure. If in case you're a mechanical engineer, you need to know your uh, machines, and, and then, the sensors, the actuators, if in case you're going with the control system, the cables, then the storage, the filters, and the, uh, then the statistics, and then the power uh, systems. Now, the disciplines that are involved, as I said, if you look at these particular, you can easily make out what are the different disciplines you may have to talk to, you should be comfortable talking to, and you should be comfortable accepting their knowledge, and over a period of time, you will be able to give a proper uh, judgment on your particular uh, um, solution. Now, the disciplines are civil engineering, if in case we are, we are just talking to civil engineers today. So it is going to be civil engineers, sensing technology, communication technology, storage technology, signal processing, health evaluation, prognosis, and power technology experts. And these are the experts and domains that will be involved in this particular uh, uh, health monitoring uh, solutions. Okay. Now, if you look into civil infrastructure, these solutions, again, you know, it gets into subdivided. It can be classified into various ways. Uh, like, you though you have the monitoring, I mean, only for seven components, but still you can, uh, the business can be uh, you know, uh, told in very different ways. Like, you know, if in case you are trying to only monitor buildings, let's say you are a consultant working only with the structural tall buildings. So thereby you are called a consultant working with tall buildings only. If in case you have a division which works on only monitoring, only tall buildings, thereby you'll be saying that the building structural health monitoring systems. Now, if in case you're only working with bridges, then you say bridge monitoring systems. Now in bridges, you are only expert in survey that means you put your web cameras and then you assess what is happening with those data and you are working with artificial intelligence to know what is going on to the bridge and thereby you're called a monitoring guy who's more interested in surveillance. So, so the, the scheme, the monitoring itself is such a vast domain. You have so much of potential to understand to do if in case you are research candidates, you can do so much of research that uh, because you have so much of data. If you are in, if you are a civil engineer who would like to get into the big data these days, everybody is getting into big data, who want to get into the application uh, domain of computer science, then you have so much of data that is going to come up from various sectors of structural monitoring or structural monitoring, and thereby you know you can do your thesis on that. If you are getting into the uh, venturing into, you're going to start up with the structural health monitoring, you can choose your expertise, you can look into your thesis, or you, if you are just a beginner, if you're already an expert, you can see what type of consultancy you work with, and then by you can start your business on uh, that particular domain, uh, specific to that domain, look into those uh, people who are going to provide you those components and talk to them and uh, talk to those uh, multidisciplinary people who are also involved in this particular activity. Thereby, you completely have an understanding of uh, the complete uh, structural health monitoring system. Now, next is structures. When it comes to civil engineers, the first question for any student or anybody who is, who is not aware of this particular uh, technology or uh, who might be uh, working with one particular technology uh, but not into various other technology there they will be having one particular question always what type of questions uh, what type, uh, what type of structure they can monitor basically you can monitor anything any any structure that could be microscopic to macroscopic that could be quite old or the oldest maybe by centuries as well as it is quite new or it could be advanced composites or it could be a temporary structure or a permanent structure it could be any complex structure so you can monitor any of the structures so all the slides whatever i'm running through is just to give you a feel of what type of structures we are dealing with every of the structure as if you want to talk about case studies uh, most of you most of them ask you know why don't we present a case study if in case we are talking about a case 
study that will be more specific to that uh, particular case only and we will be able to talk only on that uh, particular case and then sensors that are related to that particular case and components that are related to that particular case what type of analysis we did based on the uh, client's requirement so it will be more uh, like you know more focused and more specific more objective but this particular presentation is going to be just an introductory part and uh, it is going to uh, just give you a feel that where all you can venture into to so that people who are having a different thoughts and the perspectives can get into this particular domain now the next question is when and what stage i can monitor so when do i monitor do i monitor today or tomorrow or do i monitor when it started when we start constructing or before constructing or after constructing when do i monitor that's the question everybody asks and as you know there is a design stage in the design stage you can uh, get into the modeling aspects uh, you can use a finite element analysis and then you can you can do some type of analysis and then you can also check out what is going to happen with the structure you can do at the modeling stage if you are doing a prototyping you can also do a uh, Health monitoring there and the construction stage, commissioning stage, in service stage, maintenance stage, retrofitting stage, before and after retrofitting, whether your retrofitting scheme is really working or not working, structural mobilization stage. Sometimes uh, structure is going to be mobilized from one place to other place, and your uh, stringent norm says that the not, no, none of the elements should be disturbed, the strain should be within this range. And these are the things you know when you are, when you are mobilizing the old architectural uh, structure from one. Uh, place to another place it is really going to be a difficult task so thereby you need to have a structural monitoring before and after mobilization so then demo demolition when it comes to demolition you're not monitoring the demolished uh, structure but you're going to monitor those structures that are around the demolished uh, structure because there are going to be a lot of debris that is going to come up and there is going to be a lot of impact that is going to happen during the demolition stage so thereby before and after you need to monitor this particular uh, structure okay so now, as I said, the next question would be which component or a section of a structure or which, uh, what should I monitor in a structure would be the next question that every of the candidate would ask. There are, in structural health monitoring itself is a quite a complex, um, uh, as I said, domain, but it is, you know, if it is, if you are having a company which is having an objective and if you are focused on one particular uh, structure, you'll be able to dictate your terms and conditions and what you'll do. But uh, since it's an open talk and it's going to be a, a general talk, uh, we can differentiate between a global monitoring and the local monitoring. What do you mean by global monitoring is that you monitor the whole of the structure as a whole. That means what is happening with the whole structure. Then if you you take one of the components away and then you monitor that particular component then you call it as a local monitoring so so this um, the particular uh, structural health monitoring can be categorized as global monitoring as well as local monitoring the next component is going to be the sensor now that you know that nowadays we are all using smart mobiles the smart mobiles themselves have sensors so many sensors are embedded we're talking about mems you know how what is the size of the mems in fact your uh, your mobile itself has almost about 20 sensors you can check out your mobiles you can just try out to what are the sensors that is available so every of uh, the systems what is there in and around you has got sensors including alexa okay so if in case you're looking for the sensor systems okay uh, so it's quite easy the what type of sensors uh, you need but as an engineer, uh, you go always with the basics first. Uh, most of your teachers will say, know your fundamentals. Know your, you know, when you're doing your engineering uh, studies, you always go with the basics of fundamentals. But most of you think you, know, you are not uh, going ahead with the present generations and you are not going with the present technology. It is totally wrong because uh, since we have been working in this industry, we know what goes wrong. If in case a person doesn't know how to do a bending moment diagram, what will you understand about stresses and strain? If a person doesn't know what is the importance of strain, and and he talks about deflections that's going to be a real uh, disturbing thing for the engineering fraternity so well, the basics fundamentals are very very important when you get into the domain of expertise you have to put your basics and learn with the latest technology so your college studies are very very important if in case you are out of this college uh, of any college sorry uh, thereby you know you are getting into this um, uh, industry you are expected to get with the trend okay let get with the technology that's the way you attend the webinars listen to the speakers uh, from your fundamentals you try to find your with your perspective you'll be able to find innovation ideas innovative ideas understanding the principles more better and correct the individual including me you can sometimes you know you can find that i will have skipped certain things or maybe i will have defined in a different way maybe your perspective gives a better understanding and makes the definitions more better so fundamentals plays a key role so thereby the sensor is a device 
for sensing a physical variable or a physical system or an environment okay now the first most important thing which uh, which i got into this business and it was quite disturbing which was almost 10 years ago or uh, yeah 10 years ago maybe uh, you have to when we went and met the clients and they were always uh, asking us whether the structure is safe when you put your senses there would you be able to tell the structures are safe would you be able to give the complete solution would you sign the document and the authorize saying certify that this structure is going to be safe that was quite disturbing but we most of the time we were not able to answer those questions but lost the business but there are a few uh, uh, smart people uh, who were getting this business i still did it never understand that because the sensor does not measure damage okay the, this is a very basic that everybody should understand i've been educating people almost for 10 years lots and lots of colleges and webinars we've been i've been presenting just for the uh, idea to make everybody competent enough to uh, to the levels of the business so that you know the business grows so now the sensors cannot measure damage but you know the definition of damage is a change of state so whenever you put a, a sensor you will get the state of uh, at, at that particular time or progressively over a period of time when the sensor from the day when the sensor B is being installed now the damage is, is an assessment it's by feature extraction i'll explain this later but you should know by definition sensor is that that measures the physical thing and converts that to electrical or signals um, thereby you know it becomes a digital one and then the sensor cannot measure damage but definitely damage is nothing but the change of state so using sensor data you can definitely determine whether the structure is in good conditions or not or whether it is operational or what has happened with the change and well, that's called as damage now the basic requirement of any sensor you have so many sensor providers you have so much of varieties of sensors are not getting the sensor domain because that that itself is a different uh, topic we can talk in length about this but basically you should know by books if you look into if you're all anyone is that and sensor expert will appreciate my presentation here it has to be you need to know a b c d e of sensor it has to be accurate benefit compact durable and express so the definitions are given here uh, okay so so and it should also have adequate service life because we are dealing with concrete structures or steel structures that will be surviving uh, serving at least for 100 years or so so thereby you know you need to have your sensors if in case you are interested in getting the data from the day one to the day last you know that has to have a hundred years span so that's quite difficult as you know as i showed you everything is going to wear out where everything is going to deteriorate everything is going to uh, progressively deteriorate and thereby there should be some changes so when you are choosing a sensor whether it is for a shorter duration or not these are the qualities you should be checking and i believe that uh, when you're getting into a sensor provider these are the few things a structural engineer should look into now what are the different types of sensor that is available that's the next question everybody will ask now you know the definition of a sensor what are sensors that are available now the sensors can be surface attached the attachment could be various type as you know it's a basic thing it is bondable glueable weldable portable there are so many ways of doing it and there could be some sensors that is embedded and some sensors are particularly placed at certain particular place like damage and there could be sensors that are non-contact these days you had covid problem and you see all that everybody were uh, having the temperature sensors which is non-contact type and they try to get your reading so th those are also sensors so now you have sensors and these sensors and they have their own limitations they have their own strength they, they have their own advantages so the sensors can be categorized as uh, surface mounted embedded non-contact so Conventional sensors are those you, you you use the electrical sensors. If you look into your labs, they use these strain gauges, which are very tiny, and then you place it on your uh, systems or you place it on your uh, um, on your uh, testing uh, equipments or you uh, place it on your specimens and then you test it. These are surface bondable and global. For those people who never know all these things, I'm just trying to uh, help them out. Uh, for the students and there are sensors that are weldable now why am i bringing this to your notice is that sometimes whenever you are using uh, the wrong sensor let's say you are supposed to use a weldable sensor in place of a bondable sensor then you are not going to get the right results in fact one of my first uh, uh, first official uh, projects in india i had got the same mistake so i remember my mistake uh, we have in fact we have made lots and lots of corrections to that mistake but still you know i would say a mistake is a mistake so in place of uh, boltable we should have used weldable so knowing this uh, site condition is very very important you need to talk to your clients well in advance before you use any sensor if in case you are doing your experiments at your labs kindly look into your specimen looking whether it is able to surface whether it is surface bondable or you can 
can you can use some type of uh, other methodology because sometimes not all the systems are performing there will be a lot of academicians who are working with sensors or were you working in that labs you know how your equipments will perform so i'm also used to such equipments so it's a it's a well known fact so thereby knowing the sensor what type of sensors to be used in the right place is very very important now you have the surface bondable renewable sensors weldable sensors clampable sensors there are few uh, clampable sensors voltable sensors concrete embeddable and composite embeddable since you have this and these are conventional sensors that means electrical signals are converted to the digital signals so you have the digital and the volt uh, the milling uh, volts uh, then you have the uh, current type so there are various types of sensors that is available these are called conventional sensors and these are more susceptible to electromagnetic uh, interference so more as you know nowadays we have so much of mobile towers around and use so much of uh, equipments that uh, that uh, have the electromagnetic uh, radiations and thereby there could be some type of uh, uh, the noise or we call it as some type of uh, the data would be completely corrupt you may not be able to get the right data or you may not be do the right interpretations or there could be some type of errors in your interpretation itself so these conventional sensors have its own limitations and uh, when you when you are practicing engineers when you're going into the right Way, uh, you're monitoring the railway system, uh, railway or platforms, or you're uh, monitoring the bridges, or maybe the rails itself, or you're trying to the uh, the wheels of the rails. So you cannot use such type of conventional sensors. It will, it's going to give you a lot of errors. You can look into those. Uh, uh, this, uh, so there are uh, very sensors that could be. Uh, you can get these sensors at the uh, very very uh, low cost and as well as to at the highest cost. It depends on your conditions. What you uh, if in case you're looking for the sensors to be operational at hundred centigrade definitely that uh, temperature of it is going to I mean because of the temperature uh, you know that the sensor has to do function uh, reliably and if in case you're looking for higher accuracy and you're looking for the dynamic uh, that means you need to get uh, sensor data in a fraction of a second maybe 10,000 data in a fraction of a second if in case you're working with aeronautics if in case you're working with uh, civil engineers a maximum 100 is sufficient enough so thereby you know the 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 uh, the sensors uh, cost also going in change in case you're uh, uh, you're practicing academicians and your students you can uh, buy these sensors at a very low price but it will be used not it will have a very less fatigue life and thereby it may not be that accurate you may have to put your assumptions into a place and you may have to justify what happens uh, when things go wrong so now these are the most uh, what I've used uh, so this is being common in my presentations uh, those are reliable sensors we need to have a testing department for that we need to have a calibration department for that who does all these things and then they get back to you and sometimes sensors providers themselves they uh, provide such type of services thereby they say this type of system is better now in the present industry there is something called optics now we are all uh, the whole of the other nations have already converted themselves to further optics now you know that four lines in the uh, internet are uh, on fiber optics similarly the sensors are also on fiber optics these days and uh, it's been extensively used uh, uh, the uh, the fiber optic sensors are also categorized in the same way as the conventional like surface uh, bondable global weldable there are so many sensor providers uh, you can Google up uh, this uh, concrete embeddable and concrete uh, composite embeddable. And these are the sensors, uh, as I said, these are the sensors that you, what you see on the slides, are, these are the commercial sensors that is available. The cost of is, is quite a little higher on the higher range. And uh, there are a few academics uh, institutes like IASC and uh, I think CRRI are providing you with uh, the, um, uh, providing with these, uh, uh, the CRC, they are providing with these, uh, uh, fiber optic sensors okay and these sensors on the uh, it, it is of the size of your hair you know and uh, the length could uh, range to up to two kilometers or 20 kilometers there are so many things that is being developed and the technology is quite different but it's a series system it's a series system wherein you have multiple sensors in one particular strand if you look at this particular slide you can see here that this particular there is one particular strand these are sensors okay these are sensors this could be strain sense uh, it could be uh, sensing the strains temperatures and thereby there is a read the uh, integrators these are called integrators which reads the data and thereby you know you get the whole complete data so this is a technology this is a series uh, technology now the sensors uh, now how many sensors are required now you know what are different type of sensors that is available now your next question is how many sensors i can buy if in case you have a budget issue then you can't go with the minimum uh, maximum number of sensors but you need to get into the minimum but how many sensors is required is always you know you need to do a complete study on it there is all something called strategic location or the specific locations or objective based on your objective so you need to choose your sensors sometimes you may have to read only strains but thereby if you're reading strains you need to correct for temperatures or you need to know what's happening with temperature 
temperature. But if in case you're working with temperature, you're working with your lab, you need to look into the humidity. So thereby, you know, you know what are the basic sensors that gets into your particular uh, testing. Now, but the when it comes to business, when it comes to structural health monitoring business, you need to ask your clients or you need to understand what you're trying, why you're doing structural health monitoring or why you're doing the monitoring, whether you're finding the existence of damage. Is there a damage in the system? Is the first question. You, if if in class, your client says that the I mean, or uh, if you're a, a student, you can say, you know, I would like to know, you know whether the system is damaged. So that, that we call it as existence. And then further to that, somebody asks you where the damage is. Then then the question is where the damage is. Then you are trying to find the, not just the existence but the location also. Next, you somebody questions you. I would like to know the location as well as what type of damage it is available and what. Uh, then you go with the type. And then you know the type of a damage, then you will also get into what is the extent of damage. Okay. Now you you get into the extent of the damage, then you when you know the extent of damage, then you would like to know what is the life of it, what happened with it, and what are the repercussions of it. So thereby you have the pragmosis. So whenever you are looking into structural health monitoring or the damage state, you try to ask this following questions, and thereby you will also know once this question are asked, you will also know what is the complications of uh, business or what is the complication of your understanding, how much of uh, understanding you should be knowing about this particular subject now when it comes to business we call it as level one business is that you know you just put some sensors you detect whether there is a damage in the structure the level two is that you know you are also locating the damage of the structure level three is characterizing of the damage and the uh, level four is uh, sizing of the damage and level five is prognosis in civil industry we are almost reaching the third level uh, and the fourth level and fifth level is not uh, totally achieved but in academics uh, we are reaching the fourth level you can see all the western countries and the academics uh, they are already into iits they are doing getting into this particular thing there are a lot of uh, institutes that are work on uh, working on these particular systems and uh, they are trying to get into fourth level so when you look into the academics point of view that you can do it within your labs but when it comes to the uh, application point uh, there is going to be real real complications now uh, the most of the time most of the business which i is involved is most of them were in the level one wherein we are supposed to only measure only few of one or two cases or few of the cases wherein we use the data and we went to the second level or the third level so uh, the most of the cases is level one. When you see the level one, you are just trying to find what is the condition of the structure, what is happening with it, what is happening with the stresses and strain. You are more, more specific. Now, with this, you may not be able to find what is really happening with the health of the structure because you are not doing any type of analysis, but you are trying to give what is really happening with those parameters. So you may need only few sensors for those, if um, the, because we know the real structure is going to be quite large, and you know what is the the requirement. I'll just show you all those uh, slides, then you'll understand how much of uh, things are required. Now, if in case there is someone who's coming with a proposal that you need to look into the fourth level of monitoring, like they even they want to know what is the residual life of it or some like that and thereby you know we may have to have so many sensors because there is so much of uh, interconnected sensors you know the uh, present day reliability study the probability studies and you know the uh, so much of uh, system interaction there's so much of uh, dynamic interaction is happening uh, there is a coupled interaction because of that the structure is going to behave in a very different way so you not to understand that you may have to have more number of sensors which is not um, which is not uh, acceptable and it's going to give you lots and lots of data it is going to be more more uh, tedious work and not just that it's economics also is going to get away so i don't think so most of you will go for it but uh, if in case you want to know the sophistication as i said the level one uh, level two level three level four the fourth level is going to be highly sophisticated when it comes to business as well as understanding so both the uh, sequence in civil industry we are still in the level one and level two when it comes to uh, site application when it comes to academics uh, people are venturing into third level and the fourth level there are a lot of algorithms that has been developed uh, there are lots and lots of paper that has been published there's so much of advancement that is happening now the next part is now you have a structure you have placed some sensors now the sensors could be strain gauge temperature relative humidity accelerometers whatever it is it could be any of the type it could be conventional sensor or fiber optics or the combination of these now you have the sensors but how do you get this uh, data from these systems now you need to connect those sensors to some type of equipments and those equipments are called daqs and they are called data acquisition systems now these daqs are handheldable like you know, like your mobile phones they are fixed and there could be you know there could be it could be done online it could be done offline so there are various names given to it 
there is something called data loggers, there is uh, something called data uh, system. They're, they're, they have their own particular definitions, but in general, every sensor is connected to some acquisition system, and that's called as a DAQ. And um, these DAQs can look like something like this, and it has its own advantages and disadvantages. So if you, in case you're doing a permanent monitoring, you would like to put a setup that is permanently installed at a site or at a particular location. And if in case you're just doing a temporary monitoring of something uh, like, uh, you know, you you just have to have a handheld system. Sometimes it would be huge, but still you need to have do a temporary uh, temporary system. You may have to purchase a temporary setup like a van and fit in all this instrument and go there whenever you like. And that is in the move like a moving office. So now you have the sensors that is connected to the data acquisition system. Now where do you how do you transfer the data? The next question is how do you transfer the data? The data are transferred by wires. Okay, now these days we are talking about wireless technology, wired and wireless technology. We are also talking about the wired also includes the fiber optics. Now, the wiring also has its own uh, different topologies and uh, you know, there is a parallel connection, there is a series connection. So you know what is a parallel connection and what is a series connection and these sensors are connected in parallel when it is called a parallel connection. So you have a centralized data access system wherein the data are transferred from these, uh, acquired from the sensors and these wires are connected to the data access system through wires. So now there are systems that which uh, wherein the centralized systems can be converted to series system. What you do is certain components like the the uh, we call it as uh, analog to digital converters and the small components of the data acquisition system can be put into the particular uh, small acquisition, acquisition systems like this and then connect connected close to the uh, uh, the uh, sensor itself uh, where thereby you know you have the digital signals that is going to come and then connect with all a single wire so this is called a series system but what is the difference between these two from the student point of view when you walk into your labs what you see is a series system but when you're working on site if in case you have a bridge of 10 kilometers or one kilometer or you're monitoring a bridge that is stretched towards uh, one kilometer or let's say about 100 meters also just think of uh, if in case you have 20 sensors think of the wires number of wires that looks uh, that goes on to the uh, particular bridge so thereby you need to know which of the system which of the connections you need to look into so then the series connection is connected to the data system it could be remote or it could be uh, far away or it could be uh, transferring the data uh, remotely also now there are particular uh, presently there is a wireless systems uh, uh, you can uh, look into this also uh, what you do is at very close to the sensor or sometimes the sensor the system itself has a sensor and you place it on your structure and thereby you get the, what is happening with the structure your mobile phones are nothing but the wireless uh, monitoring systems so that is discrete wireless uh, monitoring systems and those signals are transferred to the acquisition system the data acquisition system uh, contains con uh, stores all the data and thereby you know the further it will be transferred uh, wherever it is required so the networking itself is a different uh, if you talk to a networking expert there are so many networking schemes he will be talking about there are so much of research that is done which is more advantageous what happens with the networking system what is happening with the wired system what are the latest development in the networking systems as you see we are moving away from wired system to wireless system but since civil industry because of the various parameters sometimes you know you may uh, not every time the wireless is going to be helpful so then because of the lot of interference and the uh, lack of sight and you know, all there are so many things that gets into the play and you know it just spoils your uh, networking scheme thereby you may have to have the combination of wired and wireless networks in that you, in the wired itself you have the fiber optics these days in the wireless you have the LAN, WAN, the Bluetooth, Zigbee, and these are the things that we, uh, people in electronics, uh, if you look into the IoT uh, people who are working with IoTs, they are working with these type of system with Raspberry Pi and then the Arduino ports and they are trying to do such type of uh, system which can do some type of monitoring. Okay, now if you, these are the systems which is used in uh, some of the uh, certified labs. Uh, just put, uh, uh, just to for your knowledge, we are not talking about a single wire which looks so neat in my, as, as you saw in my presentation. It doesn't look that neat, but it will be quite uh, complicated. We may have to have the wiring expert coming into. If you just uh, walk into your college or you walk into your office, just uh, talk to your uh, LAN expert or your uh, the person who is uh, taking care of the system. Okay, the system admin, and try to look, uh, talk to him about. Your network how does he do every wire of it is named and he knows which of this it has got a particular ip in the mac id he knows which of the wire is connected to which one so though it looks so complicated it is not so complicated technically but they will be having a thorough understanding though it looked messy uh, by sight 
but it will be doing the right job okay so you may have the port to the system you may have the fixed system as i showed you and you can also have some type of uh, handheld uh, short term monitoring like you may have a single wired i've been working on this particular system and uh, my old company so i'm very much uh, comfortable with this particular system because i had it has its own advantage and it has its own disadvantage now this is a bridge one of the bridge that uh, i was involved uh, in the monitoring that is in uh, uh, Australia. So, wherein uh, this was uh, the why uh, why this particular slide is so important to this particular presentation is that this particular uh, study was done by one of the PhD candidate who was uh, into academics, and uh, this was a business to us. And also, there was lots and lots of errors during the initial study itself. So, I had an opportunity to walk into the international business because of this one particular study. I'm very thankful uh, to those people who made this mistake because it uh, it opened an opportunity for me to express my um, uh, understanding with the system, and thereby I could talk to some academicians who knew the subject, and uh, thereby my uh, fellow experts were able to appreciate that. Uh, okay, I can give a real, uh, I can contribute to structural earth monitoring. So now, if you see this particular uh, picture, you can see a single wire that's moving across the bridge, and we have multiple sensors that is provided. So this particular webinar is for academics as well as the entrepreneurs or the people who are into this business, who are experts and consultants. So yeah, by you know. The, uh, the system is being utilized here. You see this particular uh, project which I spoke about has all the combinations uh, for the entrepreneurs because I was a beginner. Then uh, you were in business. My company was into business. So that, then there was acad academicians who were working on different uh, technology and there was failure. So there is a whole lot of combinations and this webinar uh, is all about that. So this is a very good example. Now there are uh, the the same. Uh, this is conventional sensors. Similarly, the, the it works in the principles of uh, fiber optics. Okay. So the fiber optics uh, also is being utilized in some of one of the bridges. Uh, I have maybe in some other webinar I'll be talking on that the fiber optics and uh, there are lots and lots of issues with fiber optics practically when you go on to the site practically there's going to be lots and lots of uh, uh, going to be issues okay so now the fiber optics is being not just used only on the bridges or the buildings it's being used on the oldest monuments if you look at this particular slide it's used in mexico uh, wherein you can see the monitoring i had this opportunity to work with this uh, 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 the experts and then you know they, you can see they wanted to know how these with temperature what is happening with these huge blocks okay what's going to happen with these huge, huge blocks this uh, the best part of this particular uh, system is that you can stay back home you can be in india you can enjoy the indian food and as well as work for the uh, uh, the countries wherein there's the climate is going to be tough and then you don't know the situation what is going to be there just uh, you can put some local uh, uh, guys and then use the digital technology and try to install it and uh, it's going to be error free not an issue with it so now uh, as i said you have a parallel system the sensors are connected to the data acquisition system using some wire the wiring can be series or parallel it has its own advantage and disadvantage if you talk to an expert you, if you talk on bus topology he will tell you the, what is the advantage and disadvantage of it i just put you for your understanding these days uh, lots and lots of uh, people are uh, coming with a lot of new ventures these ventures are uh, uh, mostly they are drone drone based like you, you can see that pizza has been deliver, uh, delivered using drones but how they monitor it also you know that how we do it so this is also a monitoring similarly in structural to be very specific to civil engineering most of the bridges can be monitored even if you are let's say uh, during this period covid period you don't have your visual inspection team but you need to monitor that particular bridge and uh, if in case you have been working on iot's in the uh, last uh, five years or six years back uh, we had uh, one particular um, uh, board that was called a flute those people who are into electronics i think they will be uh, educating me on this uh, because i got it from the uh, us one of the company called flute i don't know whether they're still operating their uh, the wi-fi range was 1.5 kilometers so i wanted to develop one particular uh, uh, signals i just wanted to take some strain gauges nothing i was not working with drones because i'm not that good in electronics but i just wanted to i was very happy to i wanted to know how it works so that was able to uh, take the signals from 1.5 kilometers with a little bit of lag so the lag is not an issue because we are doing a uh, we are doing a drone based uh, 
monitoring so well you just take the data and then later you do the analysis so drone base is extra extensively used kindly don't concentrate on the drone there are various type of drone i've taken it they have taken these images from the internet nothing to nothing more impressive about it but what you have to concentrate is that structures there so you can see that the this is a structure that is a steel structure and you know how the complex uh, what happens when you're using a drone and you know what are the possibilities where all you can go you need to have the experts to climb that particular uh, bridge and you know it is below the uh, you know there's going to be a water that is going to gush anytime so if you're using a drone you're more safe your whole team is safe you are having uh, less risk and the best part is you can get into the nets and bolts of your bridge even if it if it's a huge bridge if it's a huge bridge you can still get into the nets and bolts of this particular uh, structure so drone based monitoring is uh, picking up if in case somebody is interested if the electronic students or those people who are even including who are uh, just not interested in engineering want to get into the photography because i uh, you see these days everybody is getting into the photography but still you can enjoy this drone can be used for uh, you can have a parallel uh, business opportunity to use the drones for monitoring and uh, you can make a uh, good business there now uh, these drones, uh, you have the concrete structures, you have the uh, the structure, you can also see, you can uh, install some of the entity equipments and then thereby you can use these uh, drones to monitor, okay? So there are various uh, structures that you can monitor. And that's the whole, and uh, these days you have so much of antennas that has been placed, uh, so much of uh, uh, towers that is being placed uh, across the globe and uh, this requires these antennas there is a huge business and um, the poles and uh, the electric poles it's a huge business you can also monitor and you can know that you know you can also monitor those wherein you, there is a lot of risk involved in it okay so now the the data that is going to come is humongous because civil infrastructure is going to be large that means you need to have more sensors the civil infrastructure has to be monitored over a long period so thereby you need to monitor continuously the data is going to be humongous so big data comes into play those people who are interested in big data this is the right opportunity to you to understand and you'll be still in civil engineering doing civil engineering business but still you'll be working on civil engineering data so data storage is the next issue now when you're storing a data you should also understand now, now this is not a big issue these days you have so many servers there are cloud uh, supply uh, uh, cloud uh, service providers so i think uh, knowing the data how much of data because uh, if you know how much of data is coming you'll be re you'll be uh, happy to optimize your uh, uh, the number of sensors the basic idea is to reduce the cost because the more data you're going to store that means you're going to buy more of uh, uh, storage cloud storage thereby this is going to uh, hamper your business so that would be a major issue data management now if in case you have stored the data for your client the client would request you to have the data for many, many years. As you know, these days we are all into digital world. There could be lots and lots of issues with the digital world because there will be cyber security is a major issue. And you know, there will be a lot of data theft. Sometimes the hacking of a system itself will happen. And that could also lead to lots and lots of issues and the piracy issues. So thereby, you may have to have a proper data management systems. You may have to have proper terms and conditions for this particular data management system with your client or else you may lose your data and you may lose your business also now the data presentation as i said you may have big data you may you if talk to a computer student you may have lots of big data you just the analytics and everything if you look into google analytics itself the presentations are quite simple so everybody who's an end user doesn't want to get into the uh, engineering aspect of it but he just wants to understand what is this data and it has to be easily understood so i believe that you know the data how much of a data you get it has to be as simple as possible now what you do with this data these data. So what you do is you collect the data, like the temperature, strains, uh, displacements, because all of the engineers here. So you will only be interested in that. And then what you do is you get back to your office, you do or else you will have an online uh, system which is uh, having an algorithm. Then that algorithm will interpret or you'll try to find what is really happening with it. You'll find the threshold values, whether it is cross threshold value or not. Thereby you get the information. That information, what you do, immediately send an SMS or you try to do uh, send a message or make a report and thereby somebody will take an action the whole idea of this shm that's the whole idea of uh, the what is structural health monitoring now i would just extend about 15 more minutes if the organizers are okay with that so there is uh, this is going to be for those people who are already into this business that is going to be business opportunity so over to the organizing or the hosting uh, uh, can i continue or uh, because we are at the shop at 2 30. yeah yeah continue sir Thank go you. ahead sir
Thank you. Uh, so we will uh, now we will look into the uh, the business opportunity. This is a major uh, because all this while we were just understanding. I think most of you who are in academics and those people uh, who are already looked into my presentations uh, would at least have some revision. Now let's look into the business opportunity. Now, when you talk about the structural monitoring market, so you need to understand that there is something called technology. You can get into technology, you can invest on technology that could be wired or wireless technology. You can also provide offerings like you know, hardware or the software part of it or its services also. So these are the things I was involved in uh, the development of the technology and I was involved in uh, purchasing the hardware and supply and also selling of the hardware. Mm -hmm. Now the service part, we were also involved in service part. Since I was into the civil, the civil infrastructure itself, so I had the capability to reach to people like marketing, to talk, or to develop webinars, to develop brochures, and uh, these the whole of the, my team was only into the marketing. So progressively what we did, if you look at my profile also, progressively I looked, uh, get into the business, I understood the, as a student, I was into the business and then as a researcher then as a scientist they asked me to do certain uh, on a back study and then certain inputs then later once we had developed the system it has to get into the market we got into the market which is india and then we looked into other uh, potential market that is uh, foreign countries and then we also try to give services this is the way we develop software so, so structural market uh, when we talk about market it is technology offering that is hardware software and services so, uh, then the civil industry its application and geography you need to extend your market fully now the market dynamics you need to understand what is the driving parameter opportunities restraints and challenges now whenever we talk about this dynamics people when you do the uh, the complete study when you're working with your company and you're uh, you're reporting to your boss on the market dynamics of your you're reporting to the management the management has its own study that is done and what they would look is in this way the driving opportunity restraints and challenges but i would go in a reverse way challenge restraints opportunity and drivers that's the way you need to be as a businessman so you always look into the challenge first let's look into the challenge first requirement of skilled laborers operators for installing calibration of structural monitoring instruments the most of the time where i failed or where i see people failing is that they don't understand the concept of structural monitoring because of the limited knowledge or they wouldn't have known this particular uh, technology and thereby you know things goes wrong so because of that the business also is so this is a major challenge so these webinars which are trying to which we are uh, uh, we are providing from ica as well as you know i've been educating people since the day one of my presentation uh, thank my uh, my uh, uh, CEO, COEs and the CEO, uh, CEOs who helped me and uh, appreciated me to get into this uh, marketing as well as you know talking to people, educating people because I from the day one I was a teacher so uh, so thereby you know I developed my skills thereby I was able to give my best to my uh, companies. Now the technical challenges and operational factors these are the major challenges the technical challenges are humongous there are various technical challenges as I said the operational factors as I said it's a multidisciplinary if something goes wrong you need to talk to everybody you need to gel with everybody you need to have a, a multitasking you can't just be you know into structures and just say I know only structures I can't talk with, uh, about strain gauges you need to know something basic of it so technical challenges are many many so and you need to give a complete understanding of techn uh, technical uh, things to those people who are non-technical sometimes who are uh, on the authorized seats to uh, sign your documents for this particular uh, task need for large amount of data processing and management these days although we have big data analysis uh, the tools and other things yes still it is a big challenge uh, because the data is what you get is humongous and the interpretation what uh, you get is nothing so thereby you know you have already done a business but you end up with uh, not giving any of the output to your clients and you know what will happen to it they may think that you know you're just uh, taking the data without giving any type of services so that's a huge challenge that we civil engineers are facing the restraints are high installation and monitoring cost even if you if you're using drone it has its own limitations but if you are installing uh, installation cost is quite high when it comes to business so the monitoring cost is also high because you need to have this team of people who has to be uh, working uh, every day because you need to look into it that's a restraint i'm talking about inaccurate results due to error in reading there could be various possibilities various issues as i said even not just the electrical interference uh, not from the only the, the engineering aspect there are various other aspects that uh, results in inaccurate readings okay 
Now, the slow growth in developing countries. Now, as you saw, you know, you know most of uh, someone asked me a question in one of the presentation. You've been talking about structural health monitoring. Why are you in academics? So, academics are uh, already into structural health monitoring. When it comes to business, why am I out of it? Is that in slow growth? Sometimes what happens, as I said, you may be highly paid. It's a highly paid job. You may be highly respected. But the growth, uh, the market is very, very important. And sometimes, uh, because of various issues in the developing countries, some technologies takes a back step and academics takes the right and if you want to know the 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 development in academics or the structural health monitoring you have to see we have there are so many algorithms that is being developed but we don't use it so opportunities now what are the business opportunities the regional opportunity in the asia specific including australia you have so much of humongous uh, the uh, responsibility and you have so much of uh, opportunity for you to venture into these uh, apac countries and, and then the gulf countries also so there is so much of uh, opportunities then there is something called public uh, private partnerships that's going to help uh, on the uh, hugely in your business development and then the use of advanced uh, sensor technology you now your people are uh, you know every a student even from the school days that's talking about robotics they're talking about iot's so everybody is knowing something about the advancement uh, advanced sensors maybe i'm outdated but the latest generations are definitely they're uh, more advanced than us they use the most advanced uh, sensor technology they know they have an uh, idea so that's the giving you an opportunity to be an expert and then the integration of technology you know that you know things are becoming simple but because we have so much of integration it is becoming things are becoming very very simple everything is becoming you know one Single, uh, single, uh, single chip, everything you are getting, all the acquisition system sensors, everything in two. So now the biggest drivers, as I said, I'll be talking about the driver because when you present to the management, I think drivers will be the first and then it go in the reverse way. But when you are when you are having your own business, because I was a consultant, I have uh, was working for a company, so thereby you know I need to I was developing this. So the biggest driver is that the construction industry is the largest industry which requires structural health monitoring or structural monitoring. And if you know the construction industry is one of the least digitized, that's the major advantage. Before COVID, you would understand that the digitization there were lots and lots of debates about digitization you know, how it is going to hamper but during the COVID close down everybody appreciated that online transaction online teaching and online everything is online now yes there are hiccups there are a lot of technologies that needs to be developed but still the construction industry is having the least uh, it's the least digitized and needs lots and lots of improvement and uh, that is already reported I'm not talking about it's not my words it's a research report and the construction industry holds the largest market as I said and uh, as you see, if you see various countries report the infrastructure reports, you can download it. You can look into the markets, and uh, they they guess uh, they are focusing on more of the critical structures. Now, critical structures in civil industry are major it's bridges dams tunnels these are huge it's not going to be small it's not only is placed on a table it's going to be large it's going to be spread over uh, uh, lakhs and lakhs of kilometers thereby there's going to be lots and lots of opportunity not just for uh, structural monitoring for various other sectors interrelated se sectors now there are uh, there are other countries which are majorly investing you see, if you look at the previous uh, during the covid time and a few countries which is already uh, said that that uh, they are no more uh, pay, they are completely zeroed with it and they are heavily going to invest on uh, infrastructures because they need to grow up the economics now you if you know all the people experts are few people have come back and you know there is going to be huge potential in outsourcing this particular business from those countries and there is an increasing demand in uh, uh, structural monitoring because of the close down or because of their uh, resources and they know it's going to be digital these days anytime the name the, the operation can go wrong things go, can go wrong they need to maintain it so the currently what we are though okay let's say that you are already into the business but if you look at the, the present scenario we are just looking to very few things like any identification of root cause of structural performance estimation of site statistics assessment of fatigue life these are things that we are working with primary uh, indication of unexpected displacement and monitoring of extreme events and verification of repair we have but there are so much of potential there are so many potential that we are not ventured at all now if you look at the numbers if you're looking at the financial aspect of it now yeah before COVID, i'm just talking i'm reading all these reports that were uh, that was published before COVID. so if you can see there is going to be 3.9 billion okay 3.9 billion in 2023 that is the opportunity you're going to get so even if you look at the tunnel sector because most of you are getting into tunnel most of the business is getting into tunnel so if you look at that, that tunneling is going to take up a major leap and thereby there is going to be lots and lots of system that is going to be installed to monitor what is happening with the structure 
the software services, because we are having a lot of digital uh, systems and the data are going to come, the software and the services are going to increase, obviously. The retrofitting and uh, existing structure is also going to be increasing because of various uh, demands these days. The inspection is obviously because of the retrofit, the inspection and maintenance will also increase. Now, the next part is the census to hold the largest share of the structural monitoring market or the uh, present day, you know, there is a lot of IoT technologies that has come up that is reliable and thereby the, this technology is going to grow up. If somebody is interested in investing on sensor technologies or uh, bringing up with some type of uh, uh, you know, retailing or something like that, you can also venture into it. And the wireless technology is also also, there, if you see a lot of uh, the Airtel or uh, Airtel or the Act or the Internet provider service providers were so uh, high demand during this COVID time, so every, everything is going to increase. And as you know, uh, definitely structural monitoring because of the aging infrastructure, that itself is a major driver. Then decreasing cost of census. Uh, previously, the census were quite uh, high. Now the census are going to reduce so drastically. Thereby, you know, people will look into it. And then the failures, which is already done because of the close down and previous to the close down also, that is going to also, because it's going to incur high cost because of this catastrophic, the structural monitoring is going to be a definitely a big, big opportunity. Heavy capital investment is going to be there worldwide, definitely for sure. You can look into the reports as well as you can look into the later days if in case you're interested. Stringent government regulations have come up, you know, these days, you know, the, even the Indian scenario is changing. So in India, as you know, this India is the latest up, you know, the China is, you know, still debatable. I would say China is uh, the one of the fastest growing hub and uh, they are the most advanced country. But still, India is, uh, is also leaping. You know, it's getting it's getting ahead. While this uh, urbanization needs to be supported and it's going to support the economy, but it has to be supported with various technology. Now, the technology uh, like, you know, the smart cities, these technology is supporting that. Uh, how do they make this urbanization rapid? The, uh, the government of India uh, is already, you know, it has got this vision of smart coming up with smart cities, maybe a hundred and uh, odd uh, cities have been already identified to make them smart. It is already in progress. They're already in progress. Things are developing progressively uh, in, the, in the Indian phase itself. So now, it, uh, why is it required? Why are they making it smart? Because they want this sh uh, seamless sharing of information between all the um, entities that are within the smart city. Uh, less uh, intrusion, that means less of physical activities, less of contact, and then uh, start processing time because we use artificial neural networks and then in artificial intelligence and thereby you can give some solutions that are ready hand and then later you can put some expertise into it and then look at the uh, real aspect of it. So this is the whole idea of uh, smart city. You can see that the smart infrastructure uh, and cities is one which functions in sustainable, intelligent way and uh, Excuse me for that. Okay, uh, so among the uh, specific information and take uh, effective measurement, integrate all infrastructure services. So basically, we are trying to connect, interconnect every of these uh, system and the whole idea is to make the whole world smart. so the there are lots and lots of iod's and uh, things that is coming up these days to make the world smarter smart cities so lots lot of trees there but the first step to make this uh, uh, smart city the first step is to install or to have the structural monitoring systems in place so for which Huge, huge, huge business opportunity as I say so I will be concluding with the three more slides only with quotes which will have our perspectives open and you be of your own perspective because uh, you are you could be an academician, you can be a particip uh, participant or you can be uh, a, a practicing engineers, consultant, scientist or anyone. If you, you view in your own perspective, you would make your own conclusions. So that's why I leave the conclusions to the participants here and the concluding statements are there are secret opportunities hidden in every failure. So this particular COVID time, we saw that digitization is going to be a real, real, real thing. And we saw a lot of uh, hiccups in our digital systems. So there is going to be a major activity. You saw one of the WISEC failure. Uh, you know what is going to happen with other failures, but definitely you can see secretly some opportunities. People who are uh, into health monitoring, NDT and related stuff carry your bags, start walking, the systems are ready for you. And the next one is when opportunity presents itself, don't be afraid to go after it. So there is an opportunity right away. There is a lot of people who know what a sensor, what is an IoT. Every student is in the college are knowing this. So you know it very, very well. This is the right opportunity. Don't be afraid. Get into the webinars, understand the technology, develop your knowledge. Now, you should know one more thing, a very important thing. It is possible to fly without motors but not without knowledge and skills. Very, very important. You may have a motor, 
or you may have a skill or you may have something to fly but if you don't have the knowledge and the skill definitely you will not be able to do anything so the knowledge like this uh, webinars and the skills like practices were getting into the workshops and you know working with your uh, academic labs or working on the site or having the first hand feel of the system is very very important last now you attend the webinar most of you would have attended the webinar i been telling people all these things knowledge is not skill very very important when you are coming to structural health monitoring don't be in the conclusion that you know the definition of structural health monitoring knowledge is not skill knowledge plus thousand times is skills so you need to put into practice so you need to practice so thereby you would be able to completely do justice to this particular thing so thereby uh, the knowledge what you got from this webinar is just to give you a complete understanding of the system, complete understanding of the business, but you need to have some practice. You may have to do some experiments, be it on uh, virtual labs, or be it on the real labs, or be it on real sites. So knowledge plus thousand times practice, uh, or thousand times is called skill. So thereby, I complete my presentation. I thank you one and all. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed this webinar. I extended it out for 15 minutes. Uh, kindly excuse me because of the initial uh, lag. I was uh, able to extend it for 15 minutes. I thank you. If there is any question, I'll be happy to answer. I'll be open on my email. My contact details are here. I'm open at my college. We are working now. Uh, everyone in our college are safe. We are the first. Uh, I mean, we have been uh, having the complete uh, digital technology in our college to cater every of the requirement of our students as well as those people who are participating in our webinars. I thank the ICA team, which has been completely kept confidence in me. I particularly thank uh, R L um, um, Ramesh, Dr. R L Ramesh. He's been constantly behind my back, uh, helping me to uh, reach my objective of uh, educating people. And I'm very thankful to Mr. R L Ramesh and the ICA team. Uh, who are appreciating my, uh, uh, I mean my, uh, up, uh, my, uh, I mean my uh, whole uh, thing of uh, now educating people on this particular domain. Thank you, one and all. Uh, if there is any question, I'll be happy to take. Yeah, over to Elaram, sir. Dr. Chandramouli, sir, excellent presentation. I never heard such a beautiful presentation regarding structural health monitoring. You have covered all the aspects, including. Uh, Aerial survey, generally people were talking about repair and rehabilitation, but you have covered the whole government of activities. Would like to have this presentation to many, uh, many more uh, distinct uh, uh, webinars and seminars. Uh, definitely we'll take it forward. Maybe we'll have a, a international conference on structural health monitoring. Uh, so it's giving me a lot of ideas now to conduct an international webinar on structural health monitoring. And uh, excellent presentation, sir. I thank you very much from uh, I see. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. So we have a few questions from the audience. So there are many more questions. Only we have selected the few important questions. Just I will uh, ask the few questions to Chandramoli, sir. Say the one question from Gopinath is: Is it possible to detect the P waves using sensors, and can it be connected with a cloud and to disseminate the intensity of wave to the user? So this is his question, sir. So if I have to understand, I think um, uh, Dr. Gopinath or Mr. Gopinath, uh, I believe he is working on soil uh, or the earthquake engineering and his question is to do with uh, the, the P waves. Uh, if you look at the time history, uh, basically whenever you look into this particular sensor data, uh, the first thing is that how do you locate the uh, site of uh, earthquake is like using the uh, the, uh, the uh, the parameters of P wave. So thereby, the uh, how to locate a P wave, you can do it. Uh, if you get into, I am, uh, I will share you the web link where you can also look into those data. I think it's in the PERI um, website. You can also look into that. Uh, it's easy to, it's, it's, uh, it's, you can do, you can find the uh, the data what you are looking for. You can definitely do that. Yeah. So you are mentioning a various types of sensors also. The one question from Imorli. So what type of sensors I can use it to monitor the corrosion and dampness in a structure? Okay, uh, there are, um, yep, okay. Uh, to be uh, general, uh, my answers are not, uh, I'm, I will take it as a general question, not to 
talk in detail because when you ask a question to an expert you will complicate your understanding so so i will i will try to keep it as simple as possible if in case you truly uh, require this particular answer i'll answer you but in general there are sensors uh, like um, you have the uh, ladders ladder probes which will be installed onto it like uh, humidity we are talking about the dampness uh, which is talking about the uh, moisture content or the dampness you may have to have a rh for uh, humidity and if you look at the correlation correlation also changes with temperature temperature and then the relative humidity which is a major factor and then as well it is going to be ambient as well as surface so you are talking about the corrosion uh, there is going to be a lot of ndt equipments are already there potentiometers are there so you can also place those as well as you can in case particularly want corrosion meter in general i'm talking about uh, like a lay, i mean like a simple engineer you can put corrosion meters you can with that add some uh, uh, temperature sensors ambient temperature structural temperature both then put some uh, moisture uh, moisture meters then uh, then also as well uh, relative humidity uh, reading meters so thereby you will be able to get the parameters which you are looking for and uh, based on these data you may have to do some type of uh, assessment on that not directly extract the data whether it is corroding or not but if you are looking for a ready made solution you can also look for uh, um, certain companies which are providing you corrosion control systems okay or the prevention systems or the uh, protecting systems they will be able to help you out ready made because they have the sensors in hand they will also control it so thereby i think you will get the whole idea of it um, if in case you want detailed answer i think you can always be you are welcome so just to uh, reduce my time i think i'll answer i'll answer that yeah so the one question from divya ajay as we know that structure needs maintenance so once the structure needs maintenance structure can be long durable so similar way and she has asked that how do we maintenance of these sensors even it is embedded on the structure or within the structure okay a well, very good question i appreciate that question because as i said uh, this particular business uh, as it looks very uh, advanced and uh, very beautiful this question is so nice uh, because he put pointed at he nailed it exactly when you embed a sensor the possibility of it functioning because of the uh, the uh, the approach of uh, embedding it like you know you concrete it and you try to have so much of equipments around it sometimes it damages sometimes the location of the sensor itself will move away because of the concreting or any other construction activities now if in case i have to tell my experience i worked with fiber it's also which is embedded and as well as the traditional sensors in the lab as well as on site uh, there are lots and lots of issue because of this and that's a major issue and when it comes to maintenance uh, if in case i have to give you a solution because uh, we just can't say there is always a problem uh, as i said this is always a complication so you need to take extra precautions uh, when uh, when you are installing a sensor but uh, when it, in case you are looking for the maintenance if it is functioning if in case it is properly located at the right place and things are the signals are coming from the sensor the, the whether the sensor is uh, rightly performing there are certain uh, uh, softwares that is already developed which uh, which is uh, tech based and it says whether the sensor is operational or not the first thing there are sensors which are already in place uh, which we can tell you but if the sensor uh, is already embedded and you if in case it is damaged um, there is a uh, there is no option for you to put it back in place so that's that's the that's a true fact so maintenance of these sensors has to be there if it is embedded you need to take extra precautions in the uh, placing the sensor in the connecting the sensor as well as maintaining means to uh, every time take a note whether the sensor is functioning or not using the softwares that is uh, related to the sensor itself so that's my question on related to sensors uh, have i answered that or is there any further question to that no yeah that's only one question yeah yes sir thank you yeah so one more questions from uh, girija shankar mishra so uh, any structure available with visible sensors so please uh, share the location where it is going on so i think whether he or she wants to know the location where the work is going on going projects uh, they want to see is that in bangalore or it may be anywhere if you know please share it sir okay uh, i will answer that and as well as i'll tell you uh, whom to reach to uh, but uh, since i am working for now i am uh, into academics so i am not authorized previously i was uh, authorized to give all the links 
uh, I can show you some videos if you want in the next uh, some type of arrangement, whatever. I can show you the videos because I have just recorded few videos for the academic purpose. I have an agreement with the, because I was a manager. Uh, I have an agreement not to share those links and as well as the site. Okay, that's the first part of it. If in case you're looking some solution from me itself, I can share you some videos which I already got it with me just for the academic point of view. No other, uh, I may have to take some uh, um, some uh, permission to that. I will do that. The next thing is within India, the if you if you are in Kolkata or in Bangalore, uh, there are lots of surveillances that is done on the bridges. Uh, in uh, Mangalore, uh, we have done a bridge wherein the sensors are not used now. You can see those sensors or wires already out. Uh, there are, uh, uh, to my understanding, a uh, lot of people, a lot of clients don't allow uh, the, uh, the reach to that. But at BMRCL, if you look into, if you get into the BMRCL, if you are in Bangalore, you get into metros, you can see a lot of surveillances and these type of activities are going on. They are using all type of uh, sensors and the algorithms there. And uh, if you get into IAC or any of the labs, I think you'll be able to get all these sensors and those things. But particularly at a uh, site, uh, since I am not having an authorized uh, uh, thing, I'm not able to give you a clarification on that. But definitely I look into it. I have a link which is already there on the website wherein uh, you can talk to those engineers. Uh, like uh, including the the statue of the, the present statue which is there in Gujarat also is being monitored. So I think uh, you can talk to those people. I can share you those details and thereby you can also visit if in case you're academician. I think you'll get the permission. But if you're a businessman, I think uh, you may have to take special permissions. Yeah. So and here also in Bangalore only the near MG road. OK, so what they are uh, going to test on the Metro rail BMRCL. I think Chandra Kishan sir is doing the work on this. So till today yeah. the sensors are available. It is there in the place itself only. If they want to, they can see there. Is it correct, sir? Right, right, yeah. right. If in case uh, I am aware of this particular uh, issue, yeah. uh, I don't know whether the sensors are still operation. We had done uh, a testing of uh, BMRCL. Uh, uh, when I was in the company, I have the presentation. If in case somebody is interested and if BMR sale is okay with it, I can do the presentation. Professor Dr. Chandrakrishnan has uh, done extensive study on material uh, studies and his lab is completely on fatigue. Uh, he has done extensive study on structural monitoring. He's also, I think, is a director of uh, the uh, infrastructures. Uh, I think he'll be the right person to get the permission and as well as go to the SAR. Yeah, so for this. Yeah, so you can go to the IASC. So there you can see the Chandra Kishan. So you can get his contact number. You can contact him he, and he will share the locations of where the work is going on on structural health monitoring. Definitely he will help you. Okay, and next question is one more question for testing. Say from Katrivel M. So for testing simple beam elements in laboratory, whether the series connection of sensor is efficient or not, this is the his questions. Okay, that's a good question. That's also uh, okay. Uh, again, uh, when I talk to an expert, you may complicate things. Uh, I'll try to keep it uh, from the student level point of view. The wiring aspect uh, shouldn't matter much if in case you are doing an academic study because uh, the whole objective is to get the data out. And if in case you are using any of these topologies, should do its uh, requirement. But uh, when it comes to labs and when it comes to short uh, short span, I think the parallel system is always better. And these days, the system that is available, the cost efficiency, I think the parallel system wherein the, you have multiple wires uh, coming from each sensor, getting to the data system will give you more efficient data and effective data. Uh, but when it comes to series, I have done a testing on for in a research lab in government of Karnataka for the government of Karnataka. Uh, I have no issues with it because when it comes to the online monitoring and real time monitoring, there are two different aspects of it. The online is different and real time different is very different. Now, when it comes to your uh, simple being, all that your objective is to get the data from those sensors and do the, uh, your other uh, research activity on offline, like this, you're not going to do online. So there would be a lag. Uh, if in case you have an accelerometer and with a uh, strain gauge, and you're trying to correlate this, there could be a minor lag in it. No, so I think so that that could be a that could be an issue. OK, that could be an issue. So I think uh, to answer it very simple and short, uh, these two systems shouldn't matter much. But I would if in case you're going for a lab within the lab, please go with the parallel system. 
uh, if in case you want to, uh, you're working with very minute sensors or very minute specimens which are very sensitive to the modal parameters, then you go with a series uh, type of uh, system with a very light uh, fiber optics type. So that will be better for you. Yeah. So there's a last question from attendees. I will take this. So uh, this question is from Dr. Tejas Doshi. So can composite materials be helpful to use after assessment and evaluation of a structure? Okay. Uh, I will uh, reframe the sentence, I mean, uh, reframe the question. Maybe I understood in the wrong way. Maybe you can correct me. I believe that he's talking about the composites that is used for retrofitting. If in case yeah. these retrofitting the composites can be embedded with these sensors, if that is a question. The question is only that can composite material will be helpful to use after assessment and evaluation of a structure or structural health monitoring. This is his question. Okay. Uh, I, question I, I will try to. Uh, I will try, try to reframe it and put it on all the possible ways I understand. Yeah. If in case you are going with the retrofitting scheme with the composites like CFRP, uh, you can put a sensor after the applying the CFRP and then look for the before applying CFRP and get the details. If in case you are looking at the composites itself as a sensor, the composites itself, these days you get the composite with the embedded sensor itself, that also is functional, that also functions and that also gives you the results. And when you are using a composite, definitely there is going to be enhancement in the performance. Uh, if in case you have used the proper proper composite and you have done the proper design. So to answer, uh, I believe I understand this way. I think you are asking whether can I em embed a sensor within the composite, or if I embed a sensor within the composite, will it give me the reliable results? If that is a question, it will give re reliable results. Lots of lab studies have been done with it. Lots of experiments have been done in their site also. So composite can be uh, two types. It could be embedded with sensors. It could be uh, without sensors also. Once you apply this, uh, if you are a repair and rehab uh, individual who are working with repair and rehab, you can put a composite. Before putting a composite, make a study using some type of sensor. It could be vibration-based sensors or it could be strain gauge uh, sensors. Then you put the composite and then do the same study. You will get to know whether the composite is functioning. If in case you are asking whether I can use composite embedded sensor, uh, definitely it works. Don't have to worry. And this is going to perform also. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you. I have my own question. Yes, sir. So how this drone will helpful for structural health monitoring? Because see, the drone will take only the images of what the uh, sensor we have installed on the structure. So how do we correlate the values with respect to the image? I will give you one particular example, sir, and then later I'll take you with the answer. The first example is there is a uh, chief engineer by name Das Gupta who was, was a chief engineer at uh, Raibis, Kolkata. Now, in the presentation at IIT Delhi, what he answered to me was I was using some costly sensors. So he said he's a photographer, basically, he's on Facebook. So yeah. And what he does is he takes a snap of a bridge of his ray because he's a chief engineer. So he takes a snap of a bridge now and then later and he's to find what is happening with the bridge. If you look at the Chandakishan's work in the, re, uh, in the recent days or maybe about five years back, he was also working on this image mapping and knowing what is happening at the bridge only with the image itself, image processing. So that's about image processing. Now, if you look at the GISM or the uh, uh, remote uh, monitoring, wherein we are looking at the what is happening with the air pollution, we are taking the images and then further processing into it. Now, when it comes to drone, the drone is not, uh, it could be used for monitoring. As I said, the health is going to be a quite a, a, a different, uh, I mean, you know, it gives you a different uh, meaning for different people. Now, if I will say structural monitoring, wherein I can include all. Now, if you're a person who is just investigating, the visually inspecting, thereby you're taking the snap and you can document it. You know, documentation purpose, the visual uh, photography is very, very important and that takes the major uh, role in uh, debating. The next thing is, if in case you're taking a drone, drone has its own um, uh, uh, issues. And now what you do is you take the pictures before and after, if in case you're doing the monitoring of damages or you're trying to assess the damage or performance. So you can go to the individual, if in case you already located a portion wherein it is uh, deteriorating or you're finding some type of deterioration, you can move the drone there, take a snap, and after a few minutes or few days, or if in case you're looking for a month, you can take the snap and you can find the difference of it and you can assess the damage. And as well, you can also do a image processing if in case you're looking for, there is a particular uh, 
there is a MIT present day technology which talks about uh, how uh, the motion uh, amplified sensors have come, wherein only by looking at the uh, videography, videographs, you can easily find out the modal frequencies and how it is vibrating. So drones can be used from basic photography to the photography for understanding what is happening, to investigating uh, for other purpose, and as well as it can be used for NDT, and as well as it can be used for taking the image and processing the image. So thereby, you know, you have so much of possibilities of using the drone. I would categorize this as structural monitoring. So that's why you know, I told you the present day, there is a circular says that, you know, you need to uh, remove the word health rather than put only structural monitoring. So thereby, it is uh, when you're talking in general, general terms. So I, I, I hope that I was able to give you a more of an explanation. Yeah. It's enough, sir. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. So, on behalf of ICA, so once again, I thank the speaker of the day, Dr. Chandramoli SV, Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, PS University. Definitely, sir, you are provided a wonderful presentation. So, I thought that the all the research scholars will make use of this presentation. Definitely, it will help for them. And you are given the advanced types of sensors also used for the research work. So on behalf of ICI, I thank you, sir. And also I thank uh, the host of today, the uh, today function, the webinar, uh, Dr. T. Timai Institute of Technology, KGF. I thank management, principal, HOD, and faculty members of uh, all Dr. TTIT for hosting this uh, webinar. So once again, I thank Madam for taking this opportunity to host this uh, function. Once again, I thank all the attendees of this uh, today's webinar from ICA Bangalore Center. So once again, I thank you all. So over to Manila, Madam. It was a wonderful and great knowledge gaining session. I thank our speaker, Dr. Chandra Mauli, sir, for sharing his knowledge and enlightening us through his lecture. It was a great experience, sir. I thank all the members of ICI student chapter, Bangalore, for your support and encouragement in this venture. We look forward for many more, sir. I thank the management, principal, and all the TTIT staff for the constant support. I extend my thanks to all the participants for being a part of this webinar. Thank you one and all. Have a nice day. Stay home, stay safe.